Flood Protection Secrets, the podcast to the protection against heavy rain and flooding by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippa. So the big challenge is how can house owners like you and me get a flood-free home? How can business managers like you and me get a flood-free company? And how can public servants provide flood-free critical infrastructure and livable cities? Flood Protection Secrets, the podcast by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippa. This podcast is for foresighted and proactive people who do not want to shovel the muddy water out of their room while standing in the midst of the disaster. Therefore, those who design and plan, the architects and engineers need to construct such buildings and cities and that even when the entire environment is completely flooded. That is a challenge and this podcast will give the answers. Flood Protection Secrets, the podcast by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippe. Yes, hello and welcome. Today I want to share a little bit uh, yeah, the beginnings with you. What made me start a flood protection business in Asia? So uh you yeah, we have to go back to 2012 and uh, that was a time um I um, was discussing with my business partner um uh, in Germany and uh, we all agreed that uh, in Asia, there are so much disaster, so much rainfall, and uh, yeah, climate change is uh, at this time we were not that much talking about climate change. Yeah, it was in the news, but not that much. Huh? And um, then we decided, uh, let's go, uh, let's go to Asia. And uh, yeah, I traveled, I traveled to Asia um, in 2012 with. And that was, uh, yeah, I was lucky, but I also did something for it. I, uh, I was invited to join the then German Vice Chancellor, Dr. Philipp Rösler. And he was at the same time the minister or secretary, in American English you talk, call it secretary, or we call it minister, for economics uh, in Germany. So he was uh, number two in the cabinet of Angela Merkel at this time. And uh, yeah, we were flying with this huge Airbus. I think the whole delegation was about 70 people, 70, 75 people. And uh, amongst of them, there were 30, no, we were not 30, 30 journalists, I think, 20 politicians. So 25 or 30 uh, businessmen. I don't remember very well the quantity, but something like that. I think it was uh, uh, one part politicians, one part journalists, and one part uh, business managers. Uh, and, and one of them was me. So I was very lucky and very happy. And uh, our trip went to Vietnam and to Thailand. And uh, the topic was flood protection. That was one of the topics. Huh? And um, that is why I was there. And uh, it was very interesting for me to see how other companies uh, did it. And uh, yeah, and how they presented their product. And then I, I realized that doesn't work like that. You must be in Asia to help the, the Asian people. You cannot just fly in, make a speech, and then expect that anybody will buy anything from you, and then you fly home the next day, or even something. One, one, there was one general manager who, who, who flew back uh, at, at midnight or something, and he he thought uh, now the people will buy, and I realized that very fast, and I also saw that uh, there is a lot of um, yeah. A lot of knowledge that has to be shared necessary and um, it's a long way. But the heavy rainfall was increasing and the disaster was increasing. At this time, I, I was checking the news very carefully. And uh, whenever there was a heavy rain, there was a typhoon. Huh? In, in this part of Asia, they call it typhoon. Uh, in the Middle East, they call it cyclone and uh, and. Uh, in the Caribbean Sea at the US, they call it hurricanes. At the end, it's always the same. Uh, and the uh, same thing. And it always comes with heavy rain. 
And um, sometimes you don't have a typhoon or such a hurricane or a cyclone and uh, it's still raining. So at the end, the effect is what counts and that is water in the street and this water will find the way into your house and will flood your living room, your beautiful living room. Uh, first, it destroys your beautiful garden if you have one. Uh, then um, it finds a way to your basement and um, yeah, uh, kitchen, bathroom, living room, bedroom. It destroys everything what is on the way. And uh, your inventory very often um, is swimming away. Sometimes you find the things. Um, perhaps you find the washing machine in the... Uh, in, the, in your garden and the guitar of your son is swimming along the street and that is the same for for the business owners um, when the warehouse is flooded uh, uh, for, uh, for instance for veg uh, for uh, yeah vegetables so a uh, warehouse for rice sacks um, in, in, in Germany it is, it, we don't have rice but uh, what we harvest uh, but potatoes for instance at the end it doesn't play any role what it is important is that it is protected against uh, from the danger of floods um, because the fouling is so huge and I know in the Philippines that I think that was uh, eight years ago uh, one um, uh, representative from the Department of uh, Agriculture told me that they lose almost 30 to 40 percent because of fouling and uh, bad storaging. And uh, so that is the loss. And um, in the Philippines, uh, um, they are now importing rice before they were an exporter. But that is another topic. So what made me start the flood protection business in Asia? So I was with, uh, with the German Vice Chancellor, Dr. Philipp Rösler, and I'm still, I'm still very thankful that he was choosing me to to join his group and uh, it was very easy to talk sometimes people always say oh it's difficult with the politicians you cannot talk uh, i can only tell you that uh, i i observed a very hard working delegation and um, one curious thing is that uh, that they don't need much sleep <laughs> if you ever participate at the delegation i tell you You, you maximum of sleep is four hours, uh, so <laughs> or perhaps five. Anyway, um, yeah, I realized that uh, there is a lot of disaster, and then of course um, the um, vice chancellor encouraged me to to do business and to do something, and that was very, yeah, that was really encouraging and um, a lot of of positive energy, and uh, I was so thankful. And then um, I asked myself the question: So how can I do that? And uh, I, I had the honor to make an interview with him. <laughs> it, was in, it was in Vietnam when uh, we were sitting uh, in the evening after a long day. I don't remember whether it was in Hanoi or in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, we were in both uh, cities. Uh, and uh, uh, we were sitting at the rooftop uh, and, and having a, a drink. Uh, it was already 11 p.m. or something. Or midnight and uh, the the vice chancellor the minister was sitting next to me and uh, we were talking about everything and then i was i asked him um and and uh, i did not know can i ask him yes or no but i did um, um do you agree that that we or can i can i interview you uh, i would like to make a small video and he said yes we can do that we do that in the residence of the german ambassador uh, in bangkok And um, yeah, that is what, what we did. And <laughs> at this time, I was not having uh, this uh, huge uh, and very expensive um, TV equipment, what I have right now in, in our studios. Um, I only was having a Kodak uh, ZI8, I think was the name. Yeah, a Kodak. Kodak, this company doesn't exist anymore. Very, very popular um, um, photographer company. And um, the, the size was like a, like a smartphone today, uh, even a little bit smaller. And the microphone was a Shure SM58 from uh, my band times when I made music. And uh, that was all. And I asked um, a friend of mine, um, at this time he was in Malaysia and he flew in to Bangkok, Stefan is his name, and uh, and. Uh, He, he was a cameraman and he never did that in his life before and we had no light. And then the day came and we were in the residence of the German um, uh, ambassador in Bangkok and um, he was so kind to give us his living room. Um, I mean, that is a yeah his living, a living room, so it's, it's, it's an office room. Yeah? 
and um, all the media, the press from from uh, Germany, uh, you know, the popular ones, uh, 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 ARD and uh, the second channel and RTL and Bild and uh, um, the radio stations, uh, Spiegel, uh, it's like the Economist, uh, uh, the Spiegel magazine. And all, all these guys with a huge and, and sophisticated camera equipment and microphone and light, they were standing on the floor and waiting. And then suddenly the minister came and he said, hey, Mr. Klippe, we can go ahead and uh, walk into the room. And I followed him. And then all the journalists said, oh, now the, the, the press conference is starting. And he said, no, it's an exclusive interview. And they said, oh, with, with whom? Yeah, that was me. And they, I think until, until today, they don't understand that it is possible to make an interview with such a, such a bad equipment. But at the end, it was a very nice interview, very great. Um, when you watch it on my, on my YouTube channel, um, uh, andreasklippe.com, um, then um, you, uh, you will wonder about the light. We had no chance. There was no light. Huh? And the... So he was encouraging me with this interview and uh, with the way how he was doing, representing Germany and bringing things forward. And that was very encouraging, very positive. And at this moment, I decided I must do more. And then we investigated the areas uh, in the regions in Asia. And uh, during the following months, um, 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 yeah, I was traveling around in Asia and uh, investigating and checking out where is a good uh, country um, that can serve us for our headquarters, uh, for our company. I mean, headquarters at this moment you start and uh, with, with uh, yeah, simple. And uh, um, so I was traveling around. I, 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 I was in Singapore, in Malaysia. I was in Vietnam, in Indonesia, in the Philippines, of course. And uh, in, in Borneo, uh, of course, Malaysia, Malaysian part, uh, Borneo, there, there's uh, Brunei and uh, Indonesia, Malaysia. Um, and uh, did I forget anything? I, I don't remember that. So many, many countries uh, uh, I, I, we were investigating. <laughs> and at the end, um, years later, I, I had an investigation by the German tax authorities and um, that was that was a, I had a hard time because or they gave me a hard time um, because they told me, um, Mr. Klippe, you made a lot of holidays. I said, what holidays? I, I made, didn't make, make much holidays. I said, yeah, you were traveling around all these beautiful countries where people normally do do their vacation. I said, no, I didn't go there for vacation. It was for business. I wanted to check out where my company is located. So at the end, I could prove it because luckily I kept the calling cards. I made photos. And um, for all of you who want to do, want to do the similar thing <laughs> for your business, perhaps if you're a business owner, then think about it that you prove that you are not uh, there for leisure, leisure. Anyway, at the end, we uh, decided to uh, go to the Philippines because my Philippine partner, uh, she, she is Filipina. Um, but that was not the, 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 the real reason. The real reason was that I investigated, uh, I checked out there were three countries uh, where the people speak English. That is Singapore, Malaysia and the Philippines. Singapore was too expensive at this time. Um, Malaysia mm, with the three ethnies, uh, I was not sure about it. And um, uh, the Philippines, I said, ah, not bad for me as a Western guy. Um, educated with Christian belief. So, uh, yeah, 90% are Christians in the Philippines. Um, they follow an American way of life and they speak English. So if I don't make it in the Philippines, I don't make it anywhere. That was uh, the reason for the Philippines. And uh, in the meantime, uh, in, in the meantime, and we started with four people. Yeah, that's I, that I have to add. We started with four people. And, um, yeah, in the, in the meantime, um, and one of them was, uh, Alvin Baking. He is still with, uh, with us and with me since the very beginning. He was one of the four and he made it. And, uh, yeah, um, so, uh, at the end we developed our company and we understood and still understand more what is necessary in Asia because the products they use are not similar to products in England in the US or in Germany. Um, the needs are different and that is what you have to underst understand. And 
yeah, then we developed our service program that we are able to um, do the maintenance and the training, uh, the annual training, refresher training for the people. Because it's completely useless to have flood barriers if, the, if you don't know how to operate them and if they are not working, if they are damaged and then don't do the job. And uh, so it is extremely important to teach and um, help the people in Asia. So that was a little bit the uh, yeah the story <laughs> what made me start the flood protection business in Asia. Once again, I'm still very thankful, and I repeat it here: I'm thankful to this politician, the then Vice Chancellor Dr. Philipp Rösler. He was a leader of the Liberal Party in Germany at this time, and um, yeah, um, he agreed uh, to take me. So uh, he invited me to join. Uh, his uh, this uh, trip uh, to join him on his trip to Vietnam and to Thailand and um, even with this interview I could do with him there was uh, there were so many encouraging moments and I saw that other companies were doing it if I uh, can say that and I, I do it here in a, in a wrong way because uh, they 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 didn't want to learn what is important for the Asian people they didn't want to uh, yeah, dig in. So that is what you have to do. If not, it um, it will be very difficult to start this business. Yeah, that was uh, the small story. And next time, uh, I'm quite sure I will come back to a, um, more um, technically. I can have a look, by the way, here. What, what is the topic for the next? Um, ah, yeah, the next time I talk about... Uh, um, drilling, drilling into my building and you must not drill into my building but for the moment stay safe and flood free I wish and hope for you that you make the right decisions when it comes to your personal flood protection and if you enjoyed this episode please subscribe to this podcast channel if you haven't already now it only remains for me to wish you a good day. Do something with it. Maybe until the next podcast episode. I would be very happy. See you then. As always, stay safe and flood free. Your Andreas Klippe and the whole Flood Experts team. That's it again with the new episode of Flood Protection Secrets, the podcast by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippi, German engineer, book author, and head of the Flood Experts. What can Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippi, protect for you? Anytime? Worldwide? Contact us or just click through to www.thefloodexperts.de slash bonus. Detailed engineering. German quality. Safe. Flood protection secrets. The secrets you'll want to unfold. Don't forget, you're only one flood barrier away. Subscribe to the season, and you'll never be late for an episode.